What's the word, y'all? Welcome to a ramble slash one from every team. We are saying one nice thing, one good thing about every NBA organization. And listen, some of y'all been waiting for this moment because there's there's a subgenre of, of viewers of this channel that that just believe, oh, Kenny hates my favorite team. He only talk about us when we doing bad. He only talk about us when we lose a game. Objectively not true. There's not a team out there that I dislike. I have one team that I really, really love more than others, but everybody else is just kind of cool to me. And listen, I understand that y'all can't get into my mind and hear the stuff that I say outside of things on this channel or on my podcast. But I just I think it's kind of crazy the kind of length some some people go through to convince themselves that I hate a player or a team. It ain't never been that serious for me in my lifetime. For me to hate somebody or something that doesn't even affect me. So in today's video, we're seeing one good thing at minimum. One good thing about every team. Low key is just a way for me to ramble about teams, whatever. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Hit that link in the description and download the Prize Picks app and use code Kenny. Here's are matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Low key, I should have put y'all on a little bit earlier. You know, the start of the big dance was a couple couple weeks ago, and they had a bunch of different deals revolving around that, man. It is just you versus the numbers, man. You pick some of your favorite players, and you decide whether you think they're gonna go over or under in certain categories. So here's some people on the board for these upcoming games right now. Let's say I want to just pick a little hides pods of them, you know what I'm saying? Pick these four. I think Held and all of these players can go over. This is not my actual entry, but I'm just showing you how easy it can be. I see 25.5 for DeMar DeRosa. He just came back. I see 18.5 for Kelda Johnson, and I decide if I think they can go over or under. There's two different ways you can play. You can play by flex or power. Flex means that if one of these guys, if Vucevic has a bad game, it doesn't hit his over, but the other three does, well, we still walk out in the green, 1.5x. But power play means that, hey, if all four hit, I can walk out 10x. I'm just going to read you some of the things we got. NBA, PGA, CSGO, college basketball, women's college basketball, Valorant, League of Legends, soccer, NBA first half, NHL, Rocket League, trucks, trucking, MMA, tennis, Xfinity, MLB, Women's Euro League, Call of Duty, cricket, disc, and NFL. Those are all options, ladies and gentlemen, that you can play over at Price Picks. So hit that link in the description, download the Price Picks app, and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. And now I can turn this TV off because uh, basketball in college is over. We're recording this after Miami just punched their ticket into the Elite Eight. What do I know about Miami? I knew that that game was boring as hell to watch <laughs> that's why i'm an nba fan y'all i like college basketball once we get to this point but god some of them games can be so very ugly it was like 15 of 15 the f <laughs> halfway through the first half and i'm like god somebody rebounding numbers about to look crazy let's start off with the miami heat maybe not the most perfect time to say something good about the miami heat because they're currently on a three-game loser streak and all of these three games that they are they just lost in um they led at one point in the fourth quarter and this recent win is against the new york knicks a team that is on the outside looking in and the play-in Irregardless, we have to say something uh, positive. And my positive thing is that he fans. These three losses, I said this in the other video, and this just lets me know how, who's be watching the videos and who don't. Um, the way you end the season, again, does not uh, impact the way you, you're you going to play once playoff time comes around. Of course, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you're guaranteed to make it out of the first round, but I'm not looking too deep into these three losses and saying that, ah, oh, in two weeks' time or three weeks' time when the playoffs come around, I'm going to remember these three, this three-game lose streak and say, this is the reason why we couldn't make it out of the first round, and this is the reason why we didn't make it to the conference finals. Another positive thing is that Tyler Hero is the real deal. Um, these games that you have lost is because in that fourth quarter, the offense is terrible. Tyler Hero is that offense. Um, Tyler Hero's stock, that, that paycheck that Tyler Hero is about to get, yeah, it's it's about to be health hefty because these boys can't score without him being on the court. He's been one of the most valuable players in the league. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing. I'll give him that award right now. When it comes to straight-up value, how important he is to the team's success, Tyler Hero, number one above all people. Phoenix Suns. I just made an entire video two nights ago about the Phoenix Suns or being my favorite to win the NBA championship. They got D-Book, who's playing at an MVP caliber level. Chris Paul just came back, and I love Chris Paul. I'm so happy that he's, he's back. Uh, he hit all backboard like six times the other night, but he still ended up shooting like 6% from the field and had a double-double like 13 assists. I don't really understand it. He, he's great, and so is that team. The Milwaukee Bucks. I am a guy. I've, I've mentioned this. Plenty of times across all of my channels, I am I, I am a guy that can admit when he's wrong. I am a guy that can take other people's perspective and be like, "You're right." And, and in yesterday's video, I was I was talking about the the ins and outs of the NBA um, voting system and me putting together my ballot. And in that, I said, "Man, this is basically a two game or two person like race for MVP." Objectively, not right. And and I had fell into 
the voters fatigue thing too, which is weird for me because I've never been a guy that's that's been a voters fatigue guy. I kind of just penciled in those top two guys when in reality Giannis is having as good of a season as anybody in the league. So I'm reevaluating everything and, and Giannis might end up winning my MVP. I'm still undecided. But me yesterday saying that oh two man race was just stupid and I apologize, Giannis. My fault, G. The Grizzlies are going to miss John Morant for two weeks, but hey, they're basically the best team of all time when he doesn't play. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, I, I will say, I know we're talking about good things, but I will say I am a bit worried because it's a reevaluated in two weeks so, and the NBA playoffs start in three weeks. So anything can happen in reevaluation. We just saw that James Wiseman was getting reevaluated and they just shut him down for the rest of the season. So anything can happen. I'm not I'm I'm hoping for the best for him because we need him in the playoffs. Last year, I know they only went into five games, I'm pretty sure against Utah Jazz, but he was electric, especially in that game one. I need more playoff John Morant and for the team overall success, even though they are amazing without him. Let's be honest, playoff time comes around, you're going to need your star players, and he is their star player, so he needs to he needs to be healthy. But I, I'm so very impressed with everything that's going on with this team. Desmond Bain being a, a most improved player candidate, even though he's a second-year player, so he won't win it. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr. being a defensive player of the year candidate. And very early on in the season, um, it was it, people were questioning, me included, uh, the Steven Adams for Jonas Valanciunas trade, and that trade looks as good for them as it does for the Pelicans. A win-win situation for both teams. Shout out to Steven Adams. I'm recording this video as these 76ers are playing against the Clippers, and I don't know. They might end up winning this game. They might not. Oh, they are by 20. So they will, 20 in the fourth quarter, they will end up winning this game. My good thing for them is, is about the progression of Tyrese Maxey and how he makes so many things more connected when it comes to the timetable for the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, they, they were very adamant about not including him in any trade whatsoever, and it makes sense because I believe that he could be their third player in their big three. Remember, we are only talking about a year two Tyrese Maxey, um, and I'm assuming that he's going to be better next year and a year after that and a year after that. He's just going to get better and better and better, but even in year number two, similar to what I said about Desmond Bain, he won't end up winning most approved player, but he should be in the conversation because he is that that next guy. Next, we got the Golden State Warriors. Um, they don't. They do not have Steph Curry for the foreseeable future. Similar with John Morant, he's gonna get reevaluated in a few weeks, and hopefully, he's back for the playoffs. But what we can say is that that man, Jordan Poole, is showing his value. Basically, everything I said about Tyler Hero, we're seeing about Jordan Poole very early in the season. We were like, "Oh, Jordan Poole for most improved player. He's he's stellar." And then he went through this slump, and right now he is going up and up and up at the very right time, man. And I didn't realize it was this good. In the month of March, he's averaging twenty. Four points per game on shooting splits of listen to me 54 48 89 that is the entire month of march it's cool to see a team that has already done such a good job with with the inner talents continue to develop people 2019 draft draft class 28th overall pick did not play his first season, or not much his first season, but people saw, there are people out there in Dub Nation that I vividly remember tweeting at me his rookie season saying that, hey, uh, Jordan Poole's going to be nice in a few seasons. Keep keep out, uh, keep out a lookout on him, and here he is. What, what else can I say about the Celtics? We made an entire video about the Celtics like a month ago, and literally everything that I said in that video still holds today. I went on to national TV on TNT and told the world the Celtics are a sleeper team. And guess what they did? Dwayne Wade and Shaq and, and Lev Coe, I think was Candace there? I think it was Jamal Crawford. They didn't even acknowledge my video about the Celtics, and here they are still the hottest team in basketball. Now, I'm not saying that I was the reason for that, but I will say we made a video when they were asked. Um, we went into their subreddit, and and majority of their fan base in their subreddit was like, oh, I give up on the season. And then right after that, they went on the street. Coincidence? I think not. Give me all my flowers. It was me. It was me making that video. Uh, but no, the Celtics continue to be incredible. Jason Tatum, another dude that should be on the short list of 10 MVP candidates because he's like that. Robert Williams and Marcus Smart are on my short list for people that might get votes for Defensive Player of the Year. They've put it all together, and this is one of the craziest turnaround seasons I've ever seen. I think one point in the season, they were 23 and 24. They were 23 and 24, and right now, they are 46 and 28. It makes no sense whatsoever. The Utah Jazz... You know, it's it's a rough time for the Utah Jazz, too. They're 5-5 five five in their last 10. Um, they lost three in a row, including today, where things didn't look, look very great. I guess my good thing is that Jordan Clarkson is looking more and more like himself, kind of. Um, early on in the season, Jordan Clarkson was looking pretty bad. Um, he's only up to 16 points per game, but in this month, he's up to 18 points per game. His three-point shot still hasn't, hasn't been falling. 
Um, but he is back to being a legitimate. Th- it's it's hard, man. And I, I know that the Utah Jazz being good in itself at 45 and 29 should be enough. But I'm trying to pick out one thing that I can say about this team that's like super positive. And it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty tough, man. Um, and that's coming from a guy that's been a big Rudy Gobert back and a big Donovan Mitchell back. It's, it's tough to pick one thing that to be to be super excited about if I was a Jazz fan at the moment. The Bulls, listen, I can say the same goddamn thing. Um, this is this is tough. <laughs> this is tough time for these Bulls, dog. They, hey, these Bulls are not built the same way. No, they're built the same way. Um, but I, what I will say is where we are is basically what I expected for the season. It just so happened that it it happened in a way where we looked elite for some time, and now we're looking bad. I I think I came on here and said that the Bulls is probably somewhere in the middle of the pack of a playoff team. Even when we were the number one seed, I was saying these type of things. And now we're finally here. This is bad the way we got here. We went from a team that was like point differential was crazy. The defense was good. The offense was elite. And now we're, we're polar opposite of that. And one thing that I just dislike, and I guess uh, I guess this happens across all fan bases, but because I am a part of Bulls Twitter, I follow a bunch of Bulls fans. I just hate the "oh, we aren't, we're not healthy" narrative, because the te- most teams are, bro. Most teams are. You feel me? We just we lost to a team without Brandon Ingram and Zion. I can't say that. Damn, if Lonzo was there, we would have won. You know what I'm saying? There, there are underlying issues this team, but at the end of the day. It's still about where I expected them to be going into the season. Luca is still elite. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, I, I like their their trade now. Uh, of course, at the trade deadline is one of the more polarizing trades, but I, I'm thinking about it as the addition by subtraction type trade. They got rid of Chris Porzingis, who and Chris Stapps always in interviews has kind of said, I'm here to win. He he never came out and cried for more touches or anything like that. He actually accepted whatever role they gave him. Um, but they always felt obligated as an organization that Porzingis needed to get this amount of touch. He needed to play this way because, hey, we traded three first-round picks or whatever it was and some players to get him here. Um, and the addition by subtraction, bringing in Spencer Dinwiddie and, and bringing in <laughs> Davis Bertens, who can't even see the floor when he does see the floor, he's ass, has been helping the team because it opens the game up more for, for the Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic. I just don't know about the long-term plan or how much this will succeed once we get to the playoff time because they're running relatively small majority of the times and they're closing out games and they're going to go against some elite-level bigs. Even tonight, they went against, like, Car Anthony Towns and they, they struggle to to prevent Car Anthony Towns from, from getting his averages and stuff like that. So I'm excited about the way the Mavericks are looking. Just a little bit curious of how it looks once we get to the playoffs because it's a team that has not made it out of first round in some time. The Cavaliers, man, it's unfortunate the way the season is going. Of course, riddle with injuries. Karis Avera, Colin Sexton, Ricky Rubio, um, Jared Allen now, uh, Darius Garlow's dealing with some back injuries, Dean Wade is out, Larry Markin missed out every single one of their rotational players in this time, except for, I want to say, like, Isaac Okoro, has he, he might even missed out. Either way, the fact that they're still a playoff team, all things considered, is a testament to, to great coaching and, and great, great players like Darius Garland. Uh, Darius Garland is a, a candidate for most people player as well, even though his counter stats don't look that much different then last year, if you're watching Darius Garland, you could tell that he is 10 times better this season than he was last season. He is an orchestrator of the game of basketball. He is one of our best passers in this game. He gets his teammates teammates good. And even though he goes ups and downs sometimes when it comes to a shooting, he is one of the best point guards in the entire league. So J.B. Bickerstaff has done an amazing job to weather the storm of all these things. Evan Mobley is still a guy in, in, in running for, for rookie of the year. And the fact that right now, again, anything could change because they are battling with the Bulls and the Raptors to figure out who's going to be the 5, 6, and 7 seed. Um, the fact that they are a team that looks like they might be a 5, 6, 7 team is just a miracle. The Nuggets. It's so unfortunate that... They said that Jamal Murray um, is not even close to coming back, but they still have Jokic, and Jokic can still do his thing. Bones Highland has been one of my favorite rookies this season, and you know what? I kind of attached myself to Bones Highland very early on because bro's nickname is Bones. I love a nickname. I love a name, and Bones is one of, like, I have to root for you. First of all, he's like 120 pounds soaking wet, and he's out there giving people buckets. So I'm a big fan of Bones, and Jokic is still an MVP candidate. The rap. Raptors are doing their thing. I like watching Raptors games because Nick Nurse is a is a crazy man. He he be running out lineups of just if I were to look up, if I had to take a guess, what team had the most random like five man rotations on the court? 
It's got to be Nick Nurse and company, bro. They played a lineup of Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam, Thaddeus Young, Chris Boucher, and Kim Birch once upon a time. They they run our rosters or, or lineups where nobody on the court for them are less than like 6'7". Nick Nurse is a madman because he'll throw something out, he'll give it a couple possessions, and if it's working, he like, we going to keep doing our thing. And they just have a bunch of great wing defenders. Pascal Siakam, again, I'm, I'm putting together my ballot. I, I find it hard to not have Pascal Siakam on it at the minimum All-NBA third team. I know he wasn't an All-Star, but he's been ridiculously good this season. Scotty Barnes is still surprising me every single day because he's playing like a free safety on defense as a rookie. And I guess Matisse Thybulle did that just a few years ago. But you don't give that you don't get that luxury unless you're elite at something. And they are elite there. The Timberwolves are still playing with a ton of swagger, even though the other day the Suns kind of shut that up. They came out today and played with that as well. Um, Ant-Man is still one of my favorite interviews. Gideon or, or DeMarcus Cousins was sitting courtside getting his, getting his hair cut. A lot of cool stuff going on in Minnesota, I guess. The Nets. The best thing I can say about y'all is that Kyrie Irving is now able to play every home game, which changes the dynamic of the playoffs in general, honestly. The Clippers are now in a five-game losing streak, and I'm going to be honest with you. Clip gang, I, I have not watched many of your games very recently. Uh, I, I I just, I apologize, you feel me? I, I do believe that once PG and Kawhi come back, they're going to be one of my most watched teams. But right now, while y'all doing y'all thing, just teetering around 500, I haven't been having a lot of fun when I have watched y'all. So because of that, I haven't watched y'all. I, what I can say positively about you is that, hey, you still a play-in team. At the bare minimum, you're a play-in team right now, and that's a dub. The Hornets still confuse me. I mean, at one point, they were the most average team of all time. Literally, they had the same amount of wins and losses in both across both conferences, at home and away. Um, uh, in the last 10, though, they had just went on a five-game winning streak and lost a couple, but they are back to being ahead of the Hogs. Look at that. LaMelo's having some good games, man. Today, they um they let Miles Bridges basically shoot the basketball for Utah. And you know what? I was talking to the homies. That's not a terrible strategy because he's shooting like 31% on three for the season, which is weird because I definitely feel like he should be shooting higher because I've been watching him and just feels like he'd be knocking him down. Today, he did knock him down, and that was one of the main reasons why they got out there and got that win. Zion was dunking. Listen, that's all I really need to see. They said he shut down for the season. That's fine. He was dunking the basketball again. Uh, earlier in the year, they were everybody was asking, what the hell is going on with Zion? Why is nobody talking about Zion? Zion, Zion. And now he's like, I'm in the gym, y'all. Shut up. So next season, we'll see you, Zion. I'm ready, I'm ready for it. And also, Jose Alvarado became the king of Chicago for 24 hours. It's over now, but he was ridiculous against the Bulls the other night. The Hawks, uh, listen, you're a playing team. Cool. Um, the positive thing I said about y'all is that Trey Young is just a walking bucket. He's a he's a walking one-man army on the offensive side of the ball. There, there's like, he's guaranteed. Uh, what can I say? I don't even know. Without looking at the advanced stats, I would say that the Atlanta Hawks are probably a top six offense in the entire league. I would also go out on a limb and say they're a bottom six defense. But a lot of that, all of that is Trey Young. It's it's so cool to see somebody like him be an orchestrator of all things on the offense side of the ball. Obviously, it hasn't been working out too great because they're a 500 team at the moment. But when you when you take a out perspective of things and just look at Trey Young in itself, it's cool to see him dominating the game of basketball with being that small and him basically guaranteeing that his team has a chance because he is so stellar. The Lakers. Hey, Russell Westbrook, the last couple games haven't looked terrible. He's been good. Russell Westbrook has looked good. And if you ask Shaquille O'Neal, if the Lakers make the playoffs and go against the Suns, they're going to win. I don't have that opinion, the same opinion as Shaq, but Shaq believes so, so that's got to mean something. The Knicks. RJ has been so very good without Julius Randle being there. Uh, and I'm not saying I'm team trade Julius Randle, but I'm team hand the keys to RJ. Let RJ be the primary ball handler majority of the time. The Spurs are trying to make things interesting out there, but they're a whole two games behind the Lakers. And I, I think that the Lakers are going to win enough games to keep that, that difference between the two. Uh, but the but the best thing about their entire season, even if they don't make the playoffs and everything, of course, you got Pop becoming the all-time leading winner um, in NBA coaching history. But also, Keldon Johnson, three-point shot. And I'm hoping this is not an R.J. Bear situation or this is not a mile, uh, even a Miles Bridges situation where they have an amazing three-point shooting season one year. Then the year after that, they're back to normal. I would hope that this Keldon Johnson shooting season is the real deal because they're going to need that. The Wizards. Uh, f uh, uh uh, oh, Denny Abdiya had a really good game tonight. That was a W. And Porzingis had a 30-pointer. I think that's his best game since getting traded over. Um, as you can tell, as we get deeper and deeper into these things, I'm not 
I have made it, um, I wouldn't say a goal, but I've made it known that, you know, once we get deeper to the season and, and your team is not really playing for something, I'm probably not watching it often. So, like, I'm not watching the Knicks very often. I'm not watching the Wizards very often. So I don't really have much to say. Porzingis look good tonight, though. That's positive. That you can you can say that that's positive. Trailblazers, Jesus Christ. Talk about a team. I have not watched a Trailblazer game since Anthony Simons without his injury. I've watched the highlights of when Josh Hart had his big two big games back to back. I ain't watched some games, bro. Chris Dunn is on the team. What? Chris Dunn is starting? Chris Dunn is starting on the NBA team. That's a positive to me. Because Chris Dunn was one of my favorite Bulls, bro. Chris Dunn was one of my favorite Bulls when he was here. That just lets you know how down bad we were. He was one of my favorite Bulls. And then he, he went to Atlanta and basically did not play whatsoever. He was dealing with injuries here and there. And now he's back in the NBA. And he got a second 10-day contract. You know, maybe Chris Dunn is here to stay as a second string, third string backup in the NBA. But I'm just happy that he's here. Pacers are my favorite tank team. Um, when they're in a close game with two minutes to go, I'll tune in because I just want to see how they do things. We talked about it a couple days ago. They're just one of the best at doing it, blowing the lead, purposefully blowing the lead because they want to get them odds up. They see Paolo. They see Jabari Smith. They see Chet Holmgren and some of these other dudes. And they're like, hey, we want one of those. Jaden Ivey, we want one of those. So we're going to have to lose a lot of games. The Kings are seeing progression in Davion Mitchell, something that we talked about a couple days ago. I think that the blueprint could be there for them to, you know, make some more moves around the edges to make themselves a play-in team next season. Only time will tell. They actually have to make the moves. But I think it's a possibility, man. You get some progression. You get DeMond Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox playing more time together, and you get more shooters in Sacramento one way or another. That can be a team that you look at as a play-in team. The Pistons. Oh, Marvin Bagley has been really solid for them since he got traded over Kate Cunningham is a man amongst boys and I'm not even just talking about his own team or other rookies I just mean as far as an NBA player he he is that you know what I'm saying he is really really nice uh and, and they just got pieces to build around of course they're still missing some more you know what I'm saying I wouldn't look at this core and say ah in three years this core is gonna be a playoff team I still think they're missing another superstar type player added to the team because K Cunningham can progress into a superstar but I don't think there's anybody on to, else on his roster and I could be wrong hopefully I'm wrong that could be a multiple time all-star in their career city they may be but they need another player like that. At least one more other player like that. And that's what this draft is for because they're 20 and 54. Trey Mann has been one of the more surprising rookies for me. Again, I'm not a guy that watches college basketball whatsoever. I watch some tourney, like I mentioned earlier. But other than that, I'm just not a college basketball watcher. Trey Mann, not only is he a surprise, he's a pleasure to watch, man. The guy's an absolute bucket. He's a dude that puts it on the floor, hits step backs, hurt his defenders, and he is not afraid. You know what I'm saying? He's got a quick trigger. And he goes and shoots that thing. I think there's very there's positives and negatives to having these teams that are super young and so many young prospects. And one of the positives is, hey, you won't lack you won't lack confidence playing for OKC Thunder because they're gonna allow you to take the shots. The Orlando Magic Wendell Carter Jr.'s season has been so very good. I'm so proud of him. I know, I know he doesn't know me or we're not homies or anything. Uh, but as somebody that's been a fan of Wendell Carter since we drafted him, him here in Chicago, I'm so happy to see that he's found a home in Orlando and that the fans are enjoying his time. And I, I, I've said this since he got drafted and since I've watched him play for the first time. He is a guy that's going to have a long NBA career. I don't know if he'll be an all-star ever, but he's going to be a dude that's going to have a long NBA career because he's a smart defender. And now this season, he hit more threes this year than he's ever hit of the previous years of his career. And I think that's only going to get better for him. I'm just so happy for him. He is a guy that I'm watching on a very regular basis because I just want to see my boy Wendell keep, keep growing up. And last, but certainly not least... Yeah, yeah, Jalen Green, I see you, my boy. I like that, man. It's okay to be under under the radar, bro. I be trying to tell people this, and I'm not talking to Jalen specifically, but I'm talking to the fans of Jalen. I'm talking to the fans of all these organizations. They be like, Kenny, why you don't talk about this player, this player, this player? One, it might be I'm not watching that player if he's on a bad team. But two, you don't necessarily need the media spotlight on every single player when they're doing well. Do do your work in, in, in silence. Do your work in the shadows, bro. You feel me? I like the players like Giannis who don't post a po uh, uh, off-season workout. He doing it behind closed doors. He don't need you to know he working. Just know he working. I see Jalen Green working. It's okay if, if people ain't acknowledging it. He not going to win Rookie of the Year. So why why do you even care if he's getting even thrown into the conversation right now? It's over. It's wraps. It's top three race only. That's something about every team. One way or another, we got through that. If you enjoy, leave it a like <laughs> or don't. Please do, though. It helps.